So I saw Barbie two days ago. I've been letting it marinate, right? And I've been looking at responses online to the Republican Barbies who are upset that Barbie didn't represent them and that Barbie didn't end up with Ken. It's like almost an ode to the Bechdel test of like, this movie is not centered around men. We want some of these conversations to not involve Ken. And like, obviously, I mean, I think the Ken plot is hilarious. I think Mojo Dojo Casa House is a frat house, obviously. I think the idea of like patriarchy just being about horses and when they were saying like, it's an extension of maleness and like, you know, I think we can understand the appendage that that relates to. I thought that was done really well and really nicely in a very hilarious way that still made such a point. And I'm only recently seeing art and commentary that does that well, which is a good sign in my opinion. Like, yes, it's a basic level of like understanding feminism and patriarchy and the I at least getting some of the ideas about it into the zeitgeist for general public. You know what I mean? Like I'm seeing more men create work where they try to unpack patriarchy for them. I think it's important for everybody to do their own individual unpacking and for the Barbie movie to have done that in such a funny way and like sprinkle it in and like the horses and being uninterested once it's not about horses like I've seen somebody say that somewhere like I don't think it's a completely original idea but I liked the way they did it and I think if you thought I think it's also amazing that the men who are in this are actually quite flamboyant and like dancey right like Simu Liu and Ryan Gosling both danced and so they have that very like showy kind of maleness that makes sense in a Barbie movie and so for them to be the ones like representing this discussion on patriarchy it makes it sort of camp this is my dog drinking water in the middle of my video I mean h2o hydration is important I'm not gonna stop her but I think the fact that it's very theater boys it drives the point even harder because they're like <laughs> it makes it so camp and like yeah, this is ridiculous. This is so ridiculous. Do you guys see how ridiculous it is? This is how ridiculous it is. It deserves a freaking musical dance number. And it reminds me of um, the Euphoria. Oh, what was that Euphoria like scene or dance? It was like a Ryan Murphy number and it was about being like in the weight room, like very homoerotic vibes. That is actually what Ken and Simu Liu's can dance off Greece thing reminds me of is like yeah this is actually very silly and camp and dancey and like it's it's ridiculous patriarchy is ridiculous and I it is like way less interesting once you take out the horses and it's just like that is actually a comment on in my opinion like the things that made masculinity like men don't even I mean, masculinity, like to the general public and patriarchy and society, the things that make that for men, men don't even super do anymore. Obviously a bunch of men do it, but I'm saying generally, like not all men are like building houses and riding horses and, you know, making super extra money, like especially in my generation. I don't know any guys my age who know how to build anything. <laughs> You know what I mean? And I'm not, obviously there's like contractors out there and stuff. Obviously there's a bunch of men who do do these things, but like back in the day, it's like, oh yeah, these men, they build houses and they ride horses and they do all these manly things. And not every guy does that now. You know what I mean? So it's almost like, what do you, where does the toxic masculinity come from? It, it, it starts to be a little more in like between the lines. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's when you see these like little microaggressive things that you can, you know, a guy might paint his nails, but that doesn't mean he doesn't exercise patriarchy in other ways, even though he's like not riding a horse. 
I don't know if that made any sense. I think you know what I'm trying to say even though I don't think I said it. And that's why I love you guys. I love America Ferrera for this role. Also, did you know that the Brad Stalls were like her daughter, Sasha, and then her friends? I think when her name was Sasha, I was like, that's an interesting name choice. Like, I, I wonder what made them pick that. And I think a red flag, not a red flag, but a flag came up in my head and then somebody said it online after and I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. It's supposed to represent like the rivalry between Bratz and Barbie and how the Bratz dolls directly challenged like what Barbie was. And then I remembered like in the trailer it said, if you love Barbie or if you hate Barbie, this movie's for you. And you know, I didn't, I didn't find it too preachy. Like yeah, America, but that's what I'm saying. If you're gonna write that script, give it to America Ferreira cause she's the actress who goes off like in that way, but in not too much of a way. And she always, always plays that character. She always plays the one who spills the beans and like has some sort of like big monologue. Um, and she kills it. I mean, she kills it. But she was perfect for that role, in my opinion. Like, absolutely perfect. I understand completely why they cast her for that. And I think it's an interesting comment. The whole, like, Barbie land is representing, like, the, uh, the power that the Kens have in Barbie land is supposed to represent the power that women have in the real world in the sense of it's like yeah you can tell it's not there but we're not gonna talk about it too much you know what i mean and i mean here we are talking about it a lot obviously but i'm just a girl on the internet with a little dog okay that's all i am green eggs and ham i think i was surprised at how true to like the doll life it was a eh? like they weren't even like drinking water and stuff I don't know why I just didn't expect that but I thought it was a, a g cool element that made it way like I definitely thought it was gonna be more realistic or like cheerful from the jump but I liked that it wasn't I just wasn't expecting that choice which I liked that I was surprised by that and I didn't think there'd be so much singing or like callbacks or like it it did a lot of things at once but it didn't make me feel overwhelmed by it I did think they got a little silly with the Ken stuff though I think they got a little silly and I was like this it feels a little bit like an editor's cut but I'm here for it and I don't really mind but I'm surprised that they made like this the Ken musical like Ryan versus Simu that was it was quite long and I really enjoyed it but I was like, for people who aren't here for like the musical aspect, they're gonna think this is stupid and boring. I mean, it was it was a little egregious. It was a little it was a little excessive, but I loved it. It made it and it made it so ridiculous. Like it just made it so camp. I didn't realize it was gonna be such a musical, but I love musicals. <laughs> I just know that whenever there's like more than a two minute song interlude, you're starting to get into like camp rock territory and some people are gonna be like it was so sing-songy i hate musicals there's like such a, such a population that are so like anti-musical and they're the same people that like probably hate astrology and women and that's why i don't talk to them okay um but yeah this the men were all theater kids and that's why it was so good and i think i think i saw like the republican so it's so funny because i had like come up with this phrase republican barbie like a while ago i don't know like how it came about it just did it popped up in my head and then i started kind of using that whenever i would stitch like a republican barbie meaning like a barbie looking republican it's pretty self-explanatory but then the barbie movie comes out and they're all upset and now i'm like referring to republican barbies but they don't like barbie so it's a little bit ironic but the republican barbies had issues because Ken wasn't man enough and because he didn't end up with Barbie. And I'm like, girl, you're so lame for that. Like I saw some lady who, and they always get super dressed up for Barbie too, right? And then they take their picture and they post their picture and then they write a fucking essay. Um, <laughs> literally she was saying he had no testosterone 
like Ryan Gosling's character, Ken, had no manliness and testosterone and masculinity. And it's like, bro, he was singing and dancing the whole time. They needed somebody who could execute the role. Like he's not gonna be some macho, that, it's Barbie. It's a Barbie movie. How could you be surprised by that? Like, and that's, that was what made it magic. Cause, oh, I almost forgot to talk about Alan. Oh my God, Alan. I love Alan and I love how many people felt represented by Alan, like not a Barbie, but definitely not a Ken kind of thing. Um, and the way Alan would just stand there and cry every time something bad happened to Ken. And it's like, I see their romance. I see it. Also, all the different Barbies, like the one that raised her arm and her boobs get bigger. That's crazy. I didn't know that was a real thing. And the pregnant Barbie. That's crazy. That's so, that's so intense. It's shocking to me. It, it's like a little icky. I don't know. It was like too, almost too real. That was like, oh, wow. Wow. I don't know. It freaked me out a little bit, to be honest. The, the arm raising one and the, the doll and it like pops out into a, a baby. That's so gross and weird to me. I don't know why that's so weird to me. It's freaky. It freaks me out. They sold that in stores. Anyway, I need to get over it, but I'm not over it. I'm not over it. Um, I, I like that Barbie would just be like to Ken, like, why are you here? Like, I want you to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. Um... And I like that she didn't end up with Ken because if she ends up with Ken, then the goal was romance. If she ended up with Ken, then that would be like the plot line is like, we need to get Barbie to like Ken and to want to be with Ken. And then that is the story and that is the climax. But because it wasn't that, it like becomes just not it becomes not male centric it decenters men even though we're talking so much about men and being kenuf <laughs> mojo dojo casa house it decenters men when she doesn't end up with him if she ends up with him there's it centers men in my opinion so i like that they made that choice and I also think people like don't know how to like watch art and respect it for what it is. But like you, you shouldn't watch a movie like, I mean, I get it, but in general, I don't think you should watch a movie thinking it should be something and be, and then be like, well, it wasn't what I thought it was. Like you should go in with an open mind and take it for what it is and receive what it's gonna give you instead of trying to like dictate and control and determine what you want it to be and what you thought it was going to be. If you wanted it to be a regular Barbie romance, guess what? There's a million of those. They're like cartoonified little Barbie ballerina, sugar plum princess, and she always ends up with Prince Charming slash Ken. So there's also a million other movies like that. Like that's a very classic theme. It's just stupid. It's just stupid to be complaining about a plot line that's so overdone. And like, it, uh, nobody needs that again. Like nobody needs that in my personal opinion. Uh, I don't know. Those are my thoughts on Barbie. I thought it was funny. I thought it was entertaining. I think it did a good job of like saying some basic concepts. Like I'm not saying it reinvented the wheel, but I think it laid it out pretty well with a little funny aftertaste. And I think that that being in the zeitgeist is a notch it's a notch like think about that versus i don't know i'm thinking of the last time a movie was this big to me it was like mean girls which was like what is this girl doing i don't every time i say that by the way i'm pointing to my dog if you're listening on podcast sorry um yeah i'm not sure where i was going with that but that's the end of my thought train.
and a my train thought railroad <laughs> okay uh thank you so much for watching and or listening don't forget to like and subscribe and share and comment and all the things okay follow me on instagram it's at kira bria live laugh love bye